Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Matthew Mafioso, on behalf of RCC. Today's uh, lesson is going to be about the electrical activity in the heart. The previous one was about the conduction system of the heart, so I suggest you go back and watch that first before you go on to this. But if you're here for the electrical activity in the heart, let's move on. So, cardiac contractile cells. You know, normal nerve cells has a roughly uh, rest, resting membrane potential around minus ninety, minus seventy, seven zero millivolts, whereas cardiac contractile cells has a resting potential membrane mem membrane potential of around minus 90. Cardiac action potentials, um, the main thing you want to look out for is you hear about the sodium, potassium, but you never actually hear about the calcium. Um, the cardiac action potential cells really depend on calcium, 2 plus voltage gated channels, and it also has special K plus voltage gated channels, but at the end of the day, you need to know that within this action potential, there's three ions that's mainly involved, sodium, potassium, and calcium, to bear in mind. Okay, and starting off with the main point was the resting membrane potential starts with a minus 90 and it goes all the way up to around just above 0, 10, plus 10. Whereas in a normal nerve cell, the threshold is around minus 40 and it starts off at resting around minus 70. So on the screen now, you have a simple diagram published from the PSN Education. Um, here you have, it starts off with the electrical activity being generated from the SA node travels across the atrius into the AV node and C here and then from there travels down the bundle of his into the left and right bundle branches which shows here and then into the Purkinje fibers causing the ventricles to contract upwards from the apex of the heart and then eventually resting, uh, re returning back to the resting phase and we will be basically looking at the electrical activity so this here is the conduction pathway but we're going to be looking at how and why is it the different phases of depolarization. So in terms of heart there is uh, five phases um, you have phase 0, you have phase 1, 2, 3 and 4 so in all together you have five phases okay I know it's, it's a bit obscured because you usually start off at phase 1 but in terms of cardiovascular system you always start off at phase 0 now phase 0 is known as the depolarization phase which means um, this is the point where the resting membrane potential is becomes less negative and becomes more positive. And for this to happen, what usually happens is sodium voltage gated channels open initially. So therefore there's an increased permeability of sodium ions into this cell, into the cardiac cell, causing the um, um, electrical activity or the electrical action potential to rise up and become more positive. Now during phase one, which is a repolarization phase, um, what you have is sodium voltage gated channels now becomes inactive, so there's less decreased permeability of sodium ions, so sodium ions stop entering. Well, technically decreases, it hasn't completely stopped entering, but you know, decreases permeability, so now you get a downshift of the um, action potential graph because the charge is starting to decrease and become more negative again. At the same time, potassium voltage gate channels remain closed and calcium voltage gate channels are starting to open. And the slide it says is open, but what I would suggest is you want to take on board is this, you know, it's getting initiated and it's getting around, just around to get started to open. Phase 1 is shown by here, known as the repolarization phase. So over here you can see initially phase 0 here it shows that the, it's at the resting potential starts off at minus 90 and it shoots up just above zero so here it indicates that there's an influx of sodium ions so increased permeability because the sodium voltage gate channel is open over here phase one you know that the there's a decrease to the voltage sodium voltage gate channels close so there's a decreased influx of sodium so now the charge starts to decrease at the same time as mentioned on the previous slide you have voltage gate channels that remain closed and calcium uh, voltage gate channels start to open hence the reason why it hasn't shot down very quickly and it's going slowly down now phase 2 is the most important phase um, that you want to be aware of when you're talking about the cardiovascular system and here in phase 2 the main point you want to take away is the calcium channels remain closed right and you know that the sodium channels are already closed from phase one now but the calcium two plus i mean the potassium channels remain closed and the sodium is also already closed from phase one but calcium channels remain open stay open right so the purpose of the plateau phase is to prevent any tetany so 
it's a prolonged contraction. So the plateau phase is basically there to um, make sure that the contraction of the heart is smooth and completely finished or completely goes across with no problem. As you can see, phase two is indicated by this pinkish high, uh, area here, and it shows influx of calcium and uh, potassium remains closed, and sodium remains closed at the same time. Phase three is repolarization phase. In this phase, the potassium channels open. Now the calcium channels will remain closed, so therefore there's no more influx of calcium. So the you know the charges, the positive charge into the cell has decreased because the calcium is closed and sodium is also close. Now the potassium channels which were the only ions, positive ions left within the cell is now starting to move out. So go out. Efflux of potassium channels causes the uh, potassium to flow out of the cell resulting in repolarization. So the membrane potential is now going shooting rapidly down back to minus 90 which is what's shown here in phase 3. Okay here again it represents that the permeability of calcium is decreased permeability of cal uh, for uh, potassium out towards the outside is increased. Now phase 4 is the resting potential and this is the phase where this is the phase where the resting potential of minus 90 millivolts is re-established. So it's pretty much fairly simple all you need to know all you need to take away f uh, from this video is it has five phases phase 0 1 2 3 4 phase 0 is the depolarization phase phase and you need to know what happens in each phase so what are the channels that's open what are the ones that's closed what are the ions that's involved right now how this happens is um, action potentials from one cell so Im imagine you have uh, one cell and a neighboring cell you're trying to you're spreading the electrical activity or the action potential from one cell to the other so when it initially spreads from one cell to the neighboring cell the action potential spreads down the cell membrane down a certain ch channels or a pathway known as the t-tubules once it travels down the t-tubules you know as a scientist or as a um, biological student that muscle cells also have something known a reticulum known as sarcoplasmic reticulum which is referred to as SR in the video these sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium in it and they also have calcium voltage gate channels on it so it's only right if the action potential interacts via cascade to open the voltage gate channels which then allows calcium to be released into cytosol meaning that the um, then from the cytosol it enter in, enters the cell Cardiac muscle has less extensive sarcoplasmic reticulum compared to skeletal muscles because skeletal muscles does a harder job and a much harder contraction force and it's been consistently you know, worked hard. Therefore, cardiac muscle contraction depends really heavily on calcium influx from the extracellular fluid. So, that pretty much... Um, Okay, no, we need to look, talk about the recording electrical activity of the heart with the electrocardiogram. So when you walk into a hospital or eventually if you ever become a doctor, a dentist or anything, whatever profession you are, you're always, well, whoever you are in this world, you're always bound to see within even movies or films or anything, you're always bound to see an electrocardiogram recording, so an ECG, or which is also the same as an EKG recording. This EKG is simply uh, a representation of the electrical activity of the heart obtained by electrodes on the surface of the skin. Right? So body fluids conduct the electrical activity that can be detected by the electrodes. Now, there's a simple arrangement known as Inthoven's triangle, which I'll go into. Is how is the triangle is basically like a simple triangle, is, is the way that you usually connect basic electrodes leads one to three and they detect the difference in surface electrical potential between the negative and positive electrodes. So on screen now you have leads 1 which goes from the left arm which is where the positive electrode is down to the right arm so this measures the electrical activity across the atria. You have lead 2 which starts off uh, from positive to negative over here it goes from the left leg down to the right arm. This measures the electrical activity of the uh, right ventricle and the right atrium and the lead 3 measures the electrical activity of the uh, left ventricle and the left atrium and it goes from the left leg all the way down to the left arm. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the ECG and how to read it, that will be a separate video 
but the main things you want to be aware of is a simple standard ECG or an EKG you can refer to as contains a P wave, QRS complex and a T wave and I'll go into the detail of what each represents. So on screen now you have what's known as a P wave which is you want to focus on here where my mouse is pointing. This is the membrane potential graph we were talking about phase 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and I correspond each to the uh, each of these parts to that. So P wave is known as Mark's depolarization, depolarization of the atria, right? So one thing that students get confused, or maybe um, it's because I've read it in an American standard textbook, even though I'm from the UK, is that um, this bump here on the screen now is not the point where the atria contracts. This is the point where the atria becomes depolarized and the end bit, which is the small line where the mouse is pointing to now, which you can't really see clearly on the screen, is where um, the atria contracts. So again, the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. So I would say the ventricles contract at this point where from the S down towards the T. So you get the idea. So the P wave here, this bump here, represents this depolarization phase on the membrane potential graph. Okay, this is the point where SA node sends out an electrical impulse across the both atria, causing the depolarization and causing them to contract eventually. Before we talk about intervals and stuff, um, we want to talk about the QRS complex. The QRS complex uh, represents depolarization of the ventricles, which is the main thing, but they also do represent the repolarization of um, atria. Um, but we will go into detail in a bit. The main thing is it represents depolarization of the ventricles, and um, which is shown here, QRS, and the deep the contraction period of the ventricles is this area here. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization. This bump here is the point where the ventricles are relaxed. They're in the diastolic phase and they're repolarizing. Now. The QRS complex also represents repolarization of the atria. And you can't really see this. Initially, you should have a double peak, but because the QRS complex is more prominent and more dominant, um, they basically mask the repolarization of the atria on the um, ECG graph. So you should just know that, keep in the back of your head, that the QRS complex also represents the repolarization of the atria. So that's it for the video, and hope you've enjoy the video please do leave a subscri uh, subscribe to our channel please do leave a comment on how i can improve the videos and um hope to see you in the next one the next video is going to be about the cardiac cycle as well as the heart sounds involved so what you look for when you're doing auscultations and stuff and um if you like to post your own work and have videos like this posted onto our channel, you're more than welcome to. All you have to do is first go down to our website, www.royalchristcollege.co.uk, which will be mentioned in the description below, and follow the website, and you can submit your work, and it fits to a high standard, um, which is normally the case. I would post it up, or I would request you um, to make a video with, um, you know, over sound. Um, and then I'll rec uh, put it up to our cha um, YouTube channel. So hopefully, thank you for watching it again. Do spread the news. Do spread our channel to all your friends if you've found the video helpful. Thank you once again.